For this week's Fundamentals video, I've been practicing some animation recently, so I thought it'd be a good idea to go in-depth into the process behind video and audio production. Specifically, for this video, I'll be going into the process of concepting and writing for audio and video works. So with any creative project you're working on, the first step is always going to be coming up with your concept, or the idea you're going to be building from. There are a number of ways you could go about this, depending on what process works for you and how you best come up with your ideas. Personally, I've been writing long before I got into any other kinds of art and design, so typically that's where my head goes first. When I'm working on an idea, I start with a list, either in my sketchbook if I'm out or on a text file if I'm at a computer. While working on a project, I write anything and everything related to that project that pops into my head. This can include words associated with what I'm doing to full sentences explaining ideas when they come up. For people who think more visually in terms of illustration, this step can also just be many, many quick sketches. This is going to be a largely individual process. The main point at this stage is that you shouldn't try to get the perfect idea at the first go. What might seem like a truly, truly abysmally terrible idea at first could come in handy later on in the project if you have it written down and can get something out of it at a later date. Typically, I only give myself about half an hour for this brainstorming for a scripting project. Otherwise, it's way too easy to get lost in just coming up with ideas without taking them anywhere, which would mean no finished product, and at the end of the day, that would mean no money. From there, I take all the ideas I've come up with, and I start applying more of a critical thinking to them. I start cutting out the more impractical, cliche, and generic ideas out of the running, shooting to have only two to five at the most concepts left before I start flushing them out. Now, what you're going to be doing next is gonna depend on what your project is. You're not going to need to write out scripts if you're doing illustrations or print ads, and you're not going to need to do thumbnails or storyboards if you're working on audio commercials. For the purposes of this video, let's go with the idea that you're working on a video commercial because it's the type of project where everything's in one project. Once you have a concept, the next step is coming up with an actual plan for how you're going to pull it off. To do this, we use what are called outlines and or summaries. An outline acts as a sort of skeleton for your project where you break your idea down into a list of the main parts. Every kind of writing can use these and scripts aren't any exception. On the other hand, a more specific way to do this is a summary or a synopsis. This is using the same kind of information seen in the outline but it expands on it more with full sentences and paragraphs detailing the information out. If you've ever looked at IMDB or a Wikipedia page for a film, the plot section is a typically good example to go by. Your process can do either of these. The main point is to give yourself a bit of a guideline for working the details out more. These actually might be enough if you're more OCD about things like I am though, or are working on a longer piece, such as features or documentaries, there's one more step before getting to the actual script. If you were looking to get funding for a project or were hired to do film work, you're most likely going to need to do this as well. The last step in the concepting stage is what's known as a treatment. Treatments are longer, far more detailed versions of your outline or summary. Treatments read like a short story in the present tense describing the things that will be happening in the final video. They tend to include descriptions for your settings, scenes, directorial guides, where you'll be getting information from if you're working on a documentary or other research-based piece, and anything else you might need. You also figure out exactly how you want to organize the information you're presenting in this stage. These can act as your pitch to get approval for the piece as a whole before before you start working on the more complex steps of the project. Once you've gotten the treatment approved, or if you're working on your own project once you think you've flushed out the idea enough, we move on to the actual scripting. With a good enough summary or treatment, you can literally just be converting what you've written into directions for a script here. First, we should probably go over the types of scripts you might be seeing and using. For any script you do, start out with the project details at the top on their own lines. These are, typically, 
the project's title, the client or product you're scripting for, the length of the final piece, and the name of the script writer or the company that they work for. It's also a good idea to put the page number in one of the corners of the script so it can be easily organized if they're being printed out. When that's done, we set up the actual script. If you're using a word processor, you will have a better time if you set up a table that's either one column or two columns. One column scripts are used for radio, dialogue, and direction scripts. They're written with the source of your audio to start a line, followed by what those things do. For example, you start your radio script by writing music, and then follow it up by describing the type of music described, or the specific song you have in mind. Or, you write out a character's name, and follow with their dialogue, or their directions. If you're doing a video script, these are used just to explain the settings and character movements, without any guidelines for audio or video, or they can tend to get really cluttered. For two column scripts, the video directions go in the left column, while the audio and dialogue information goes in the right. These are the standard format for TV, documentaries, instructional videos, and pretty much any video production. The left side will also include any text, animation, or stage directions for your video. While I'm on that, there are a few shorthands you'll do well to know if you're figuring out how the video should be shot. While this video isn't on cinematography, knowing these shorthands will make for better script writing and happier editors if you need to hand it off. These are XCU for extreme close-up, CU for a close-up shot, MS for a medium shot, WS for a wide shot, LS for a long or establishing shot, and on top of those, there are some common variations on these. MCU stands for a medium close-up, 2S stands for a two shot, 3S for a three shot, etc., and OTS means over the shoulder. On top of those, there's also so super for superimposition or putting an image over another image, key for green screen effects, and your transitions such as fade up and down, dissolve and wipe. Don't write cut if you're transitioning that way since it's assumed. On the right side, there are even more shorthands because we like doing things simpler. Here, SFX will stand for your sound effects and bed stands for your bed music. Again, this is just a brief look at these things. I am planning on doing another video somewhere down the road going into what all of those things I just said actually mean, but for the purposes of this video, I'm assuming you already know what they mean. Just a couple more tips for this part. These are for the event that it's not a personal project. If you are doing the script for someone else, you have no way of knowing who's going to be getting and reading from your script. As such, there's some things you should keep in mind. Firstly, don't assume they're going to know how to say what you're spelling, if it's an uncommon name or word. For an example, here's a script I worked on for a course project a while back on doing a mini documentary. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see the subject's name spelled out as G-R-A with a diacritical mark, I-N-N-E space M-H-A-O-L. If I sent you a script with that name, would you be able to read it off? Unless you know the sometimes beautiful nightmare that is the Gaelic language, chances aren't good. This is why we give people phonetic guides in the script. In parentheses next to any word that you think might cause issues, spell the word out how it sounds. Using the example, actors or anyone reading my script are going to have a much easier time reading things out when I explain to them that her name's pronounced Granya Muel than if they tried figuring that out from the spelling. Removing guesswork will work out far better for everyone involved because it means less reshoots. It'd be awkward for for example, if you handed off a script doing an ad for a local business only for an actor on the other side of the country to flub the name of that place. In the same vein, it's not a bad idea to include stage direction and spellings for numbers instead of numeric values. On any line with dialogue, if you want the person speaking to get across a specific emotion, put it in parentheses. Also, if you're writing a one-column script, it's sometimes a good idea to label each line of dialogue or each event in your sequence, numbering it in sequential order. This will be particularly a good thing to have in the event of reshoots, so they have specific numbers to reference in the script when they're going back. The last part of the script writing part of the process is editing. It's a good idea with scripts, as with any writing or 
or creative work of any kind to do at least a few passes through the whole thing once you think you've finished writing it, editing and fixing and refining what you've got each time you go through. Unless you're a savant unlike any the world's ever seen, you're not going to get a masterpiece from your first draft. At least in my personal experience, trying to get everything perfect the first time never works, and it will only lead to frustration later on. So now we've got a script. Awesome. If you are not doing a personal project, this might be the part where you send it off and it, the process is done for you until your next assignment. But if you're doing it for yourself or are involved in more steps of the project, let me welcome you to the wonderful world of previs. Previs, or previsualization, is a way of coming up with all of the visuals for your still photo, film, or video scenes before shooting. Previs uses music, sound effects, dialogue samples, simple animations, photos and stock videos to set your whole final image up before you actually go out and take the time and money required to get the media for the final product. One of the most vital and commonly used parts of your previs is what's known as the storyboard. Storyboards are a kind of comic strip, with each block having a picture and the actions for a scene. This is where you make rough sketches that show what you're trying to get across in the script. If you are not an artist, you can use photos, clip art, written descriptions, or pretty much anything that's visual that can represent the idea you're getting across. Generally, you want to try to make one thumbnail sketch per action, or five seconds per block. This, if done well enough, can be a literal blueprint for every shot in your video. Director Ridley Scott, of Alien and Blade Runner fame, is known for his Ridley grams, which are often identical in terms of composition when compared side by side with the final shots in the films. The main point is that you should be able to hand your storyboard off to the cinematographer and not have to worry about them getting confused on what you wanted them to do, even if they do their own style on the final result. If you're helming the the project, there's one more previous step you can take by actually animating your storyboard, which is known as an animatic. Using Premiere, Sony Vegas, After Effects, or any other video editing slash animation program, you would take your storyboard from the previous step, either as image files or as scans, and would animate them block by block, putting them together. This lets you not only get the imagery, but also simulating your camera movements. Again, this will be something I plan on going over more in depth at a later date, so I'll leave this segment off by saying that an animatic is literally just a storyboard that's been animated to get across your idea even better before you get to the actual production. And congrats! You've now learned about the entire pre-production process, at least in terms of actually coming up with content. Down the road, I'm planning to do more on the production and post-production steps as well. As always, I hope you've all learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment down below. I'll have some links in the description for more info and some script and storyboard templates I came up with for you so you can check those out. You can also like this video and share it around which helps with Google's rankings and I'm planning to be back here every Friday so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day everyone!